good morning. It's Sunday morning, and we welcome you here to Mountaintop Ministries as we worship together. Here's Pastor Ken. I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning And the precious blood of Tony Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me power of Jesus, which we need today. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. Uh, then somehow Jesus came and brought to me victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me. and welcome to Mountaintop Ministries. We're really uh, happy to have you here and uh, want to thank you for taking the time to join in and uh, all this week you've been doing that uh, every morning. Thank you for the, just the, um, the comments uh, coming in from all over the country for your support, your prayer requests and uh, we've had uh, people answering and saying, yes, so you prayed for certain situations in our life and they were changed. And that's a great, exciting thing. And uh, people have been asking us, please stay with us. Please stay, keep doing these uh, online services. We're going to do that in Jesus' name as long as he gives us the strength. And uh, so let me lay this guitar down and I'll be right back. This morning for the word of God. I want us to go to a subject that uh, is near and dear to my heart, and it'll probably end up being the subject for all week long. Uh, I invite you to take your Bibles and, uh, you know, follow along each day, because we're going to be in the Gospel according to John, and uh, I'm going to talk about the great I Am. And uh, I want to get our attention on Jesus Christ, I really do. Get it off me, get it off politics, get it off virus, get it off economics, get it off of everything else, and get our mind on Jesus. So there's seven places in the book of John where Jesus said, I am, I am. And, as, you know, let me just give them to you quickly. Uh, in John chapter 6 and verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. Wow, that's sustaining power. In, in John chapter 8 and verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. In a dark world, we have a light. In John 10 and 9, he said, I am the door. I'm coming back to that in a few moments. In John 10 and 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. 
But we need leadership today. We really do. John 11, 25 and 26 said, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm glad that uh, life is everlasting. It's more than just down here. It's everlasting. In John 14 and 6, it says, I am the way and the truth and the life. If you need wisdom, man, come to Jesus. In John 15 and 5, it says, I am the vine. And uh, he says, uh, if you're tapped into me, you'll bring forth much fruit. And uh, this is about getting your kids saved and your grandkids saved and your neighbors saved and being a fruit bearer for the Lord, okay? So uh, uh, there we are on that. And, uh, but this morning, I'm going to be talking to you about John chapter 10 and uh, verse 9. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's uh, get our Bibles out now and uh, we'll go to that. You're getting yours out. And uh, I'm going to get mine out, and uh, I have it here. So um, are you ready to read? Okay, I'll start at chapter 10, and I'm going to start reading right here at verse 1. Okay, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not in by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. We have to watch these days. For those that would rob and kill and steal, our joy, our enthusiasm, uh, even our gathering to worship. But he that entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. Uh, you know, and um, many shepherds would use the same fold. And uh, so the, the shepherd here it represents leadership. It really does. Uh, to him that the porter opened. The porter was the one that took care of just always he maintained the fold. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Uh, here it is identification. Uh, the shepherd knows the sheep by name. That's a hard one, because to me, uh, if a sheep are all white, that off-color white, they all look alike. I don't know how a shepherd would know them by name, but he does. Uh, but that's not the real miracle. The miracle is, out of the millions of people that live on the earth, the Lord, the shepherd, knows every one of them by name. And he says he calls them. So don't, don't tell me God has never called you because he, if you feel any stirring in your heart uh, to even listen to this this morning, it's because the Holy Spirit is calling you. So it says the shepherd calls them and they know their name and they know the voice of the shepherd. In a day when there's a lot of voices, I'm so glad uh, for the voice of the shepherd. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, and he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Uh, here we have leadership again. Uh, the shepherd is leading the sheep. He's not driving them. He's leading them. And what a responsibility for these days to lead uh, the family of God and the Christian church in the right direction. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they don't know his voice. If there's anything I'm asking these days is for the Lord to give me wisdom every day, every day, so that every decision I can make will be anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. So when I speak out of my mouth every morning that you'll get an impartation of the, of the anointing of God and you'll be encouraged and blessed for the day. The sheep know his voice, okay? And I want you to hear not my voice. I just want to be a, a conduit. I want you to hear the voice of God, okay? And then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheepfold. I am the door. I am. Have you ever wondered what's on the other side of the door? I can tell you one thing. Maybe you've tried a lot of doors. We had to unlock the door to get into the chapel this morning. Once you come in, and it's great to be here. It really is. Uh, and you'll be here again someday. You really will. Congregation, remember that. There'll be a day soon. <clears throat> when we will meet together. I come into the door of my house and there's such serenity and peace and relaxation there. But when I come through the door into the presence of the great shepherd, Jesus Christ, I find everything that he paid for, my redemption, my salvation, my healing, wisdom, instruction, the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, man, the fruit of the Spirit, everything I find, eternity, I find my healing, everything that Jesus has provided, I find it when I come through that door. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, and the sheep did not hear them. 
That's because the Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and there's none righteous. No, not one. No, not one. And, uh, you know, if you're not saved, then you're a sinner. And if you're a sinner, you're serving Satan. And, you know, if you're a Christian, you're serving Jesus and resisting Satan. And believe me, Satan's, Satan's motive and his drive is to rob and to kill and to steal. And so if you're serving him, you, you are not for Jesus. You may know him in your head, but you don't have him in your heart. And I'm praying you get to know him because he's the door and you can walk through here. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. Any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, if they come through the door of Christ Jesus, he said, I will meet their needs. They'll find pasture, substance, strength. I'll take care of them. The thief, here's where this verse is. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the enemy. That's the wolves over to come in and scatter the sheep and scatter the church and scatter the Christians and persecute. And, but but that, that's the enemy. That's Satan. And he's very much alive. But we have a, a greater power in us, and that's the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can overthrow him and overcome him through the authority of the believer and faith in the word of God. He said, the thief comes, uh, comes not but for to steal and kill and destroy, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Listen, don't be downtrodden and don't be discouraged and defeated. Uh, he says here that you can have life more abundantly. Even, even in bound up times, you can have life abundantly. Even in discouraging times, you can have life abundantly. They can't touch the church. The church is in here. Satan cannot have touched the church. It's in here. The law, anything, politics, disease, virus, anything, it can't touch the church because the church is eternal. It's in the heart of man. And it, we have a great shepherd and it's just on the other side of the door. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. That's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. He laid down his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own, the sheep don't belong to him, he sees the enemy coming, the wolf coming, and he leaves the sheep and he flees, uh, you know, and the wolf comes in and catches them and scatters the sheep, and the hireling flees because the hiring does not own the sheep, okay? And then Jesus says again in verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. Uh, I want to go back to the door. Uh, door. Just follow me, Charlotte. I can't get outside here unless that door's even locked. Unless I go through this door. If I want to go outside, I got to come through this door. Jesus said, I am the door, okay? There's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, who paid the price for your sin and mine on the cross of Calvary, and uh, at the door, at the door. This is an evangelistic message this morning, because uh, although there's a lot of meat in here for Christians, uh, these are days when we need to be ready and helping people get ready. It just keeps coming to me all the time, the evangelistic uh, gifts that I have given you can use them because people need to be saved today. And I believe somebody will get saved today. They'll choose for Jesus Christ. They'll choose for the cross. They'll choose for Christianity. They'll choose for the word of God. That their life is not working the way it is and they'll choose for the Lord. And I believe some of you are so sick and tired of your life and the way it's going that you're ready to choose. Let me give you an illustration about the door. Uh, obviously, I don't have enough time, and, and uh, I, I don't want to make a two-hour sermon for, for Facebook, but uh, we'll be back to talk to you more about the door this week. We really will. But let me tell you this, an illustration. Modern technology had taken over in a little country town where there was a mom-and-pop store. Now, for years, everybody had gone to mom-and-pop store. They bought everything they need. It was one of those old-fashioned country stores. They had a hardware in there. They had groceries in there. They had everything that you need in that little mom-and-pop store. But modern times had come, 
and big department stores were building up everywhere. And a construction company and a real estate company got together and bought all the land surrounding this little store. And they were going to build a great big new complex. Man, this new store was going to be able to sell everything that you could possibly ever want. And they kept going to mom and pop and saying, you need to sell to us. you got to sell to us. We need your land. And they just rooted down and said, we're not selling. You know, we, we've been here all of our life and we're going to spend the rest of our life here. Our little store is thriving. Our little store is doing good. And you're welcome to bring your store in, but uh, we're not going to close our store because we got loyal customers. We, we have friends in the community and they've been faithful to us and we're going to be faithful to them. They kept going back, offering him big, big bucks, big money, uh, time and time again. And finally, they realized they're just not going to be able to, they're not going to be able to <laughs> buy them out, you know. Mom and Pop, we're not going to sell out. Boy, it's time we as a church don't sell out, that we, we hold the line for Jesus Christ and find ways to let the church be the church in hard times. So they build up on the left side of them these huge monstrosities of uh, buildings and stores right up close to them, okay, right up on the left side. And, and then they turned on the right side and they build up right tight to them. It was kind of humorous to see these brand new stores and here was mom and pops, you know, old fashioned store right in the middle. And they thought, we'll squeeze them out. We'll squeeze them out. They won't last for long. We'll squeeze them out. But on the day that the whole new complex was going to open up for business, Mom and Pop had made their plans. And they went outside in the middle of the night and they hung a sign up all the way across the front of their building which said, Main Entrance. <laughs> Main Entrance. <laughs> the store over here had signs open for business. The store over here had signs up that said, Gigantic Sales. But right there in the very middle was a giant sign in bold red, main entrance. Well, it was that illustration that grabbed the attention of a man named Ron Parr. And it was only a short time after that that he got saved and gave his heart to the Lord. And he's now my associate pastor at Mount Top Ministries. And I hope you know that Jesus is the main entrance to real life, the main entrance to heaven, the main entrance to eternity with God. You just can't. <laughs> Modern technology may be coming at us from the left and the right and all kinds of situations coming in from the left and from the right. But, you know, don't let them squeeze you out because the main entrance is Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary. And he stands with arms stretched out and said, hey, I died for you. I'm waiting for you. If you want what I got, Come through the door. Come through the door, okay? He said, if you come through the door, you'll be able to enter back in and out, and, and you'll find joy and peace and love and healing and salvation and forgiveness, and you'll find everything you need. He calls it green pastures. Just come through the door. Now, I'm aware I haven't exhausted all of the spiritual truth in, in, in this passage or in this one uh, I am, the door, but I have, I have brought your thoughts to the place where I want to challenge you. There's only one door. And, and there's many denominations that are using that same door. The same as many shepherds would use the same field. A fold, rather. And so I encourage you right now, come to the door. It's Jesus Christ. Pray with me now to receive Jesus Christ as your great shepherd. Dear Jesus, I know that you're the Son of God. And I know that you came into this world to save sinners. And I am one. Please save me from my sin. Because I am sorry. And I repent. And I accept you into my life. As my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus precious name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today. Please. Please text me and tell me. Get on Facebook and tell me. Get on the phone. 717-334-5430. And tell me and say, I prayed that prayer to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And uh, I'll be continuing to pray for you. Uh, thanks for sending in your offerings and your gifts of support. The congregation and the partners have been so faithful. Uh, the treasury is maintaining 
uh, financial health, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And uh, I, I bless you. Don't be afraid to call us. We're here for you. We're trying to keep a connection going, keep our, our body of believers close, and uh, it's working. It's working. Thank you to every one of you uh, for being faithful to God during these hard times. And we love you, but God loves you more. Okay? Back to Charlotte at this time. Say goodbye to you. See you now. Thank you for joining us this morning here at Mountaintop Ministries. We enjoy meeting with you each day, meeting with the Lord. Our tentative plans are to have the congregation gather May the 10th. We're not sure what capacity that will be, but uh, we will let you know more details as the time comes. But for today, please feel free to um, share this devotion if it has been a blessing to you or you've been encouraged. We would love to have you share it. Leave your comments, and above all, know that the Lord loves you today. God bless. <coughs>